violence in Cyprus is not what it sounds. In 1974, an independent republic in the eastern Mediterranean received a double blow. The coup d'etat staged by the military junta of Athens and the invasion by the Turkish army ordered by the so-called democratic government of Bülent Ecevit. The first in an attempt to overthrow the government of Cyprus and the second under the pretext of protecting the Turkish Cypriot minority which is 18% of the population of Cyprus. Cyprus has been inhabited by Greeks, the Mycenaeans, since the middle of the second millennium BC. It has been occupied by many conquerors the most recent being the Ottomans until 1878 and the British until 1960. The Hellenic character of this country bears the traces of its many conquerors from east and west. This makes Cyprus an island with memories of war and monuments of civilizations. In 1955, Cyprus revolts against British colonial rule, demanding emesis with Greece. In five years with these Zurich agreements, it will gain its independence, excluding enosis. Britain, Greece and Turkey will be the guarantors of the newly founded Republic of Cyprus. The intervention by the Junta of Athens followed by the Turkish invasion of the island and the military occupation of 40% of its territory from where the inhabitants were expelled have led to the tragedy that the Cypriot people have been enduring since 1974. What was different in the Turkish military assault against Cyprus in 1974? The Turkish invaders proceeded to divide the country and its people in two, according to origin and religion. Turkish Cypriots in the north, Greek Cypriots in the south, apparently trying to make the north of Cyprus Turkish. The Turkish invaders changed the Greek names of the occupied places and towns in an effort to erase the cultural character of the country. The cultural heritage of Cyprus is exported by the Turks and sold to the highest bidder at antique auctions in Europe and the United States. Art treasures such as the unique 6th century Byzantine mosaic of the Virgin of Ganagaria in the Turkish occupied Karpas Peninsula are extracted and sold abroad by the illegal regime of Dengtash. The culture of an ancient people is liquidated and put up for sale by the Turks. Cyprus fights for its right to history in the international courts. 1975. Silence in Cyprus is not what it sounds. A year after the Turkish invasion and its subsequent occupation, 30,000 women decide to go back to their homes from where they were expelled by the Turks. With hundreds of women from all over the world who joined them in solidarity, they marched peacefully in order to enter the devastated, occupied, empty town of Famagusta.
they were stopped. Hold it, you can't go in. It seems the status quo and the dividing line were more important than the burning desire of a people to be free. The women of Cyprus, however, have started to claim their right to return home, which is no less than the right to be free, in your own land, in your own way. And just we know about from this point, about 12 minutes, it's my home. Thirteen years of silence later. And in the meantime, diplomatic talks. You, the people, be quiet. The politicians know best. The problem is international. The problem is territorial. It's constitutional. It's a problem between Greece and Turkey. And we, the people, in silence, watching each day the military line that divides our country and its people becoming more entrenched, more permanent. Watching our towns and our villages getting further and withering away. And in the meantime, the Turkish settlers imported from the mainland are occupying our homes. And thousands of Turkish Cypriots, unable to live under the new conditions imposed on them, emigrate. The uprooting of Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots is a racist division. People who have been friends for years are compelled to separate without being asked if they like it or not. Turkey and the illegal regime of Dengtash do not allow any contacts between Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots. They do not allow the free movement of the citizens of the Republic of Cyprus. <laughs> <laughs> 1,619 missing people with families that are for years waiting to know what has happened to them. Enough is enough. A people deprived of its past and bereft of its future say, no more. After 13 years of silence, after 13 years that have led nowhere, women walk home on the 14th of June, 1987. Peacefully, we break the line of violence at Aronas, near Nicosia. I am here at the invitation of the women's organization that has organized today's march in order to show solidarity, to support their action, their peaceful action. I feel, however, a great sense of frustration, a great sense of heartfelt anger that is coming from these women who've watched for 13 years this illegal green line becoming institutionalized, becoming part of the way of Cyprus life. And they are saying with their feet what the politicians with all the best will in the world don't seem to be able to say at the negotiating table. They're saying we've had enough. They're saying this is all our country, this whole island of Cyprus belongs to Turkish women, belongs to Greek Cypriot women. And we want to be able to pass freely in our land. We want to be able to go back to our homes. I've met exiles from Famagusta. I've met exiles from many areas in the northern zone in my few hours here in Cyprus. They've left their homes. They've left their property. They've left their friends. They've left the roots that they've known. And there is a great feeling of desperateness now. And we've got to be able, as an international community, to show our solidarity. And there are American women here. There are Danish women. There are Swedish women. There are women from Holland. There are women from all over the uh, European community. And we want to say, we're with you, sisters of Cyprus. We want to see an end to this as much as you do. And if a peaceful 
act of civil disobedience like this can shift the agenda, can stir the waters of the political negotiations, then it's worth it. I'm taking back to the European Parliament my renewed vigour to see an end to this illegal separation of Cyprus, to see an end to occupation. I'm taking back my anger that the Turkish government should dare to ask to become a member of a democratic club like the European community when they are occupying a country like this. The 22nd of November, 1987. We shall enter our occupied land again, each time deeper, each time more of us. My home is just beyond this bank at St. Paul in Nicosia. We want to see who divides this land, how they divide it, with guns and bazookas. It's the Turkish army, it's Ankara, and it's illegal regime in Cyprus led by Deng Tash. It is all these soldiers facing us. This is the Attila line that divides Cyprus. Who is this army in front of us to stop us? You are dividing us. You have no right to divide us from walking there. Are you a Turk or a Turkish citizen? Which are you? If you are a Turk, are you? If you are a Turk, you are unauthorized to be here. We are authorized, you are unauthorized. I think you are a Turk. Yeah, that's why she's an honor. I have a lot of help to keep your command. We are women and armed. We broke the silence and we broke the line. Walking back home from where we were chased out by the Turkish troops in 1974 is our only way to talk about the injustice inflicted on a defenseless people. Each time more women, Cypriot and foreign, join our march home, making our voice more audible. Our silence more meaningful. Because all women of the world keep silent the same way and speak the same language, be it Greek, English or German. It's the universal language of peace with every sound imaginable, the language of life. Women from all over the world speak our language against the partition of Cyprus and against the violation of human rights. Αγωνιζόμαστε μαζί σας. Η Ελλάδα σήμερα, οι Ελληνίδες έχουν στραμμένα τα βλέμματά τους εδώ. I help we can break down all military occupation and I help and women all over the world hope that we can have peace, that we can live in peace all together. The message I take back to my country is an experience of what it's actually like here and the fact that communities are totally divided, how strong the feeling is and that the women here, the people here in Cyprus need our support and as Britain is a guarantor of the agreements that were set up before, our guarantee is supposed to mean no division of Cyprus and that's got to be made loud and clear and that's what I'll be saying when I go back. Silence in Cyprus does not mean peace and quiet. We broke our silence in order to talk about the line of violence dividing our country. We broke the line of violence because we are scared for our children, our men. Now we've been stopped by the Turkish army and we present the picture to the world of the true situation in Cyprus. 
which is that the occupying Turkish army is keeping the free movement of Cypriots, stopping it, and keeping Cypriot people from moving in their own country. We have, we have been stopped by the Turkish army. We do not want to endanger anybody's, any of the thousand women's lives. Next time we shall try to go further. Each time we make one more step. We shall continue with this dynamic movement until the green line is finally broken, until the partition of Cyprus is finished, until freedom of movement is established, until the movement of the people, peaceful movement of the people, has overcome force, napalm bombs, and all the other violence. The superpowers get together and talk. The United States and the Soviet Union, the United States and China, Europe strives for its unification, the dividing lines become weaker. It is weapons and armies that keep people apart. Cultures can live with each other, armies cannot. The Prime Ministers of Greece and Turkey meet too in the new spirit of détente. Cyprus should not be forgotten. Women walk home, peacefully occupy the Acropolis in Athens and talk to many visitors. We want you to be our ambassadors in your country. Take our message of peace. Tell everybody how the women of Cyprus peacefully fight for the freedom of their country. We in Cyprus cannot visit our ancient Salamis. We cannot even visit our homes, let alone return to them. Cyprus is under occupation. Cyprus cannot be bypassed. The Turkish occupation in Cyprus cannot be bypassed either. We, our women, walk home. Mr. George Vassiliou, President of the Republic of Cyprus, talks with Mr. Deng Tash. Their talks should not bypass the voice of the people. They talk, we ask. Why is Deng Tash preventing us from returning to our homes? Why is Deng Tash preventing Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots from moving freely, mixing together and living together? Why is Turkey still in Cyprus since 1974? Why is Turkey importing Turkish settlers that change the demographic composition of Cyprus? What right have these settlers to be in our country and in our homes? What right have the Turkish soldiers over our country and the future of our children? We, the women of Cyprus, will be walking home while you are negotiating, while you are not negotiating. We shall walk home to stay for good. 19th of March, 1989, women walk home again. 6,000 of us this time get together to break the occupation line of Attila. Many have joined us in solidarity from all over the world from Europe, the United States, to, uh, Australia, and Canada. ...with other women for the struggle of liberation in a very peaceful way. Where are you? I'm from Montreal, Canada. Canada. Yes, I am from Montreal, also from Quebec. Some of us are from New York, others are from California. We come from all over the United States. Montreal, Canada, also. Why do you come to us? For the same purpose, for peace. We're going on a peaceful march to try to reclaim the homes of the people who have a just right to live in their own country peacefully and without problems. And something that we believe the women of Cyprus and the Cypriots have a right to, and that is the unification of their country and the disappearance of the Green Line. 
I believe in the reunification of Cyprus. I have been a person who has struggled for years for the reunification of Cyprus. It has been 15 years that the Turkish army has invaded and occupied our country and we want an end to this. We want to leave, live in peace and friendship and there are loads of Turkish Cypriot people also with uh, similar thoughts uh, who share the same thoughts as myself. Today we shall try to break the military line at two points. Our destinations a well kept secret. The first is the Church of the Holy Cross at Limbia, abused by the Turks as an arsenal. The second, the Church of St. Marina in the occupied village of Achna. A group of women, about 50 of us, had hidden during the night in nearby orange groves. If our buses heading for Achna were stopped, at least this group would manage to get into the occupied village. Things went according to plan, our women broke the line at the hill of Limbia and got as far as the church. Our turn now. The first group moves swiftly and silently into the occupied village. Our buses did get through and thousands of women follow. This is the church of Saint Marina. We enter the devastated village. Here are the Turkish soldiers. Today, because they knew that we would break the line, they are unarmed. They look as though they're in a spot. It's difficult for soldiers to deal with peace. We come in peace into a violated church. We come in peace into a ransacked village. The Byzantine hymn stands for the ritual of an ancient, civilized people that belong here. This is our way, and this is our land. Here, we're faced with a rough situation. Soldiers and bullies are insulting and attacking us. But we have broken the infamous line and we don't budge an inch. You can't see in this way like you're pushing, you want to, you know what I mean? We are not pushing, we are asking you to leave us peacefully, we are going to go to our chair. We answer back with silence, which in Cyprus has a different sound. It is the silence that voices our right to be here. The Byzantine icons of St. Marina Church have been stolen. The church is ransacked. The village lies in ruins.
και εικονοστάσια, εικόνες επίχρησες, πολυέλεους, ό,τι φανταστείς. Here, the whole operation against us is conducted by Deng Tash in person, who is nearby orchestrating this show of violence. But the women have taken the military position by surprise and send their messages of peace. The organized forces sent against us by Deng Tash are Turkish commandos, specially trained anti-demonstration militia and many bullies dressed in civilian clothes, who undertake to throw us down the hill using every sort of violence. We cling onto the bushes, onto wires. We cling to each other. No one will make us leave unless they carry us away. is trying to show the world today that Turkish Cypriots and Greek Cypriots cannot live together. That's why he needs the Turkish occupation troops in Cyprus, he says. That's why the Turkish settlers are brought here today. Those Turkish Cypriots who disagree with him, and there are many, are not here today. But Eshe managed it. And she speaks for many Turkish Cypriots when she speaks for a united Cyprus. My uh, message to the Turkish people is that uh, they should also join our uh, movement and demand that, uh, for the reunification of Cyprus and for us all to live in peace and friendship. They should ignore such people as Deng Tash, who is um, using divisive methods. It is us people who is most important. I feel angry towards the Turkish army because uh, they have no right in Cyprus. They never had any right in the beginning to invade or occupy Cyprus. I know that uh, the organization that I represent all feel the same way as I do. And I know that there are Turkish uh, Cypriot women in Cyprus, in northern Cyprus, who feel the same way. But they are afraid to express their They feelings. are afraid to express because they not only have the Deng Tash uh, government to deal with, but they also have the Özal regime from Turkey to deal with. They stop us going any further. They prevent us from staying. A girl asks about our trees left behind. At five o'clock, we shall leave as we had previously decided.
νιώσα πάρα πολύ απέσια με το φέρσιμο του Τούρκου. Ε, περιμέναμε κάτι ειρηνικό. Πήγαμε εκεί ε, ειρηνικά. Ε, ανεβήκαμε να πάμε, καθίσαμε. Δίχω σε λέξη. Ε, η Τούρκοι αστυνομικοί και αστυνομικοί μου τραβούν το λέω. Ε, Μα εκλοτσούσαν. Εμέναν και τι κοπέλε ε, που καθόμαστε δίπλα. Μα τραβούσαν από τα μαλλιά. Επίση είχαν κάτι μαστίκια που πρέπει να είχαν ρεύμα πάνω. Μα χτυπούσαν στα κόκαλα. Μα πήραν από τα μαλλιά, μα τραβούσαν κάτω και μα έσπρωχναν σαν. Θα είναι ένα σάκο με πατάτες να πούμε πάνω στις άλλες κοπέλες. Όλες οι κοπέλες εδώ σήμερα είμαστε πάρα πολύ ευτυχισμένες διότι τους έδωσαμε να καταλάβουν ότι δεν φοβόμαστε και ότι θα ξανά έρθουμε. Και θα αγωνιστούμε και θα συνεχίζουμε πάντοτε. Αν ξαναγίνει και αύριο η πορεία πάλι θα ξαναπάω. The reason I'm here is because I was here in 74 when the Turks first came in the morning and I saw all the bombs and every, all the dreadful devastation. So I have come back uh, to support the Cypriot women every year. Ο σκοπός μας είναι να επιστρέψουμε όλοι πίσω και να έρθουν και αγνοούμενοι μας. Αυτή είναι η νύχτα των όσων κάνουμε τι, για καλό νόη, για κακό, και να έρθουν οι Τουρσίνα μας δέρου, γιατί. We shall keep walking, running or crawling home if need be in order to stay in a unified Cyprus, where all its citizens can live together in peace. Because no violence has ever been stronger than the will for freedom. On the 19th of March, 1989, at Limbia and at Aachen, the Turkish occupation forces and the illegal regime of Deng Tash captured 53 women and two male journalists. They were freed after the day marches made by the United Nations peacekeeping force and the government of Cyprus. Women Walk Home declared that they will continue breaking the Attila line.